morning everyone. Happy Friday. Um, we're doing well with our lives at the moment, at the moment which is nice. Um, today is the day that Purico's hemp cell has launched and I can now show you, can I? Yes, okay. I can now show you the jars and the packaging um, because it's actually written, I've actually got labeled ones now. Um, like the other day is live, I couldn't show you. But yes, Hep Self, it's here, today's launch day. Um, it is Friday, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's definitely Friday. <laughs> I panicked there for a second thinking, no, it's only Thursday. No, it is Friday, so today is launch day, which means uh, Hemp Self is now available for purchase. I have got um, four tins in stock ready to go out today. Um, and uh, yeah, the link's in the description for you, or you can pop in store, click and collect, welcome as well. We're at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. Um, by the way, my name is Elise, I always forget. Um, I don't forget my name, I forget to introduce myself. But my name is Elise and I'm the owner and the artist behind The Painted Brush & Co. Um, so I thought, well, it's perfect timing because I've been putting off finishing this table simply because I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> putting off finishing it and today I thought let's get it done I'm actually in a good mood this morning <laughs> um, and I thought well let's get it done so while I've got a little bit of energy this morning we can get this staged and listed and finished finally I've been sort of slowly working on it for like the last week and a half and I'm finally almost done so let's pop some hemp salve on the top of this beautiful timber. But before we do that, I just very quickly want to show you this awesome tool. And I wish that I had found one years ago. I, um, let me put that back. I am a sucker for TikTok <laughs> and I watch way too much. And I've seen a lot of um, American uh, furniture flippers that use these blades. And um, it's not really something that I'd seen a lot of here in Australia, but I thought, I was in Bunnings one day, and I thought, well, let's have a look, see if I can find one. And I found one. Um, they've got a specific name. This one is uh, Unipro Brand. I cannot remember the name off the top of my head. It wasn't expensive. I'm pretty sure they're under $20, but I just want to show you. Um, this is not endorsed in any way, but this has been an absolute lifesaver, so I'll just show you get some of the dust off it so it's this blade and it's got like this blade it's not like sharp to the point where you'll cut yourself although I'm sure if you really really run it across your hand you would um, fully adjustable and these are brilliant and I just want to show you why I wish I'd found it earlier because these are like such a time saver just for this finishing these last little finishing steps and for your prep as well. So, hang on, now I've put it down, I can't turn the camera anymore. Let me just turn it a little bit more. It's not gonna like this at all. Can you see? Right, so we've got this table. Most tables have some sort of routed edge like this. So it's got this little tiny lip, really, really common. Um, but this, normally you'd grab some sandpaper and you'd fold it over and then you'd spend forever trying to get that bit of varnish out but these are brilliant because all you do you take your edge and it's a nice straight edge so you're not going to start rounding off um, this little lip either which I love and you just drag it along it takes off all that finish what like, where has this been all my life a few of you probably know about it and I'm annoyed that you didn't tell me about them <laughs> but and just like that, nearly all of that's gone. You do have to be a little bit careful. You don't want to like gouge into your timber. But you just takes off all that extra. I've also discovered it's fantastic when you have a door that doesn't quite want to close or it's a little bit tight um, because it's, it's essentially like a, a chisel um, and it takes that little layer off and it takes paint off really, really easy. So I always like to clean up the backs of pieces. I don't paint the backs of pieces most of the time, but I like to clean it up. So along those edges, I like to have a nice clean edge. 
And this is so much faster and a lot easier to run down and not accidentally slip around the side and scratch my paint or take paint off where I don't want it. This is way easier to use than sanding for ages sometimes too, particularly if your paint or your finish is a bit thicker. But just like that, whoops, got all that off. Even on the top here, there's a little bit of paint. It just takes that very top edge off. Isn't that brilliant? So, and then I just come in with my sandpaper, just a really gentle sand. I'm not sanding like hard like you normally would. This is just 80 grit as well. A little sand just to clean it up. You do have to be a little bit careful on the ends of your timber. I do find it can gouge a little bit, particularly if it's a softer timber. This is Balinese and it's quite soft. So I do find it can gouge a little bit easy, easier than normal. Um, I've got a little bit of, oh, can I tip that a little bit? I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of paint across the bottom there. But just really, really gentle. And it just takes that paint off. How easy is that? So whoever was hiding this in their pocket, I'm annoyed you didn't tell me sooner. So it's just the, I found this in the paint section of Bunnings, where all the, um, all the like the tools and the sandpapers and all that sort of thing is. This is where I found it. It wasn't much. They're definitely under twenty dollars. I'm certain it was. I apologise if that's wrong. I'm sure they were under twenty. I've had this for about four months now, and I keep meaning to show you guys, and I keep forgetting. But look at that. Now I've only got to sand that for like two seconds, just to tidy it up. Look at that. How easy was that? These things are brilliant. So, I don't know what they're called, but they are brilliant and everyone needs to have one in their toolbox. It's a really cheap, easy tool to use. It cleaned that up so well, I haven't lost that lip and I do like to try and keep little details like that wherever I can. Um, because I think, it, I think it just adds a bit of detail and a bit of interest. But it hasn't lost that lip, which normally you'll find when you're sanding, you tend to lose it a little bit and it sort of smooths out and it's not quite as crisp and sharp as what you want it to be. So I am, I really, really like how easy this makes it as well. And this way too, I'm not destroying my fingers trying to sand those little grooves, um, which is, I think, a win-win on all accounts. So let me just give this quick wipe down and then let's use our hemp wax. So, this is a Balinese piece. This timber is very, very, very red. I've just got a cloth. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a spritz. And you can see the best way to see what color your timber is going to be with just a wax or just an oil on it is to use a damp cloth or spritz it down with some water. So this is the color that we're going to see in a minute when we um, come in with our wax. So I will let that end dry and just wipe the rest of it, get all this dust off. We don't want to be waxing dust into our piece, do we? Alright, looking good. I just had a bit of paint at the back here that I forgot to give as well. And if I don't do it now, I will completely forget that it's there. It's just because I've painted this upside down. So tables like this, I do like to do upside down. Um, just makes my life a little bit easier. I put it up on a, um, either up on a table or up on some, whatever's going. I put it up on everything from paint cans to other bits of furniture. Uh, just to make it that little bit easier when you're um, painting the base of the pieces, particularly when you're keeping your timber um, as timber. Um, I always do timber last. Simply because if you do get paint on it, it's easy to remove. Whereas if you've already stained your timber or you've already waxed it, you're making your life a lot harder and um, you're then having to, oh, sorry. Um, I should have wondered, I'm moving the camera. <laughs> um, this way, it's just that little bit easier. Excuse my mess in the background. Um, much, much easier to paint everything else first and finish the timber last because timber is much easier to, um, to clean up when it's still raw. Good morning, Nicola. 
Precision scrapers. There you go. Um, my brain wasn't going to guess that today, so thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so we've got Purico's hemp salve. Um, I showed you this in our last live, which I feel like it was last week, but I think it might have actually been this week. Um, I don't know. My days are all the same at the moment. Um, pregnancy brain has really, really got me. I'm 36 weeks and um, my brain's not working, so I apologise for the end arms because I always listen these, listen back to these lives afterwards, and all I can hear is the end arms. <laughs> but here we are. Got our wax. I like to use a brush. As I said the other day. If you were doing a lot of waxing, um, I do highly recommend these tapered uh, tip brushes. They're just, um, they're a little bit more hard wearing and they last a lot longer. Whereas these ones, this is the same one that I used the other day. It's fallen apart. It is definitely on its last legs. I'll keep using it until there's no bristles left. But um, if you are doing a lot of waxing, I highly, highly recommend a, um, better quality brush but these ones for I think they're like five dollars uh, you know I should know my prices by now and I still don't know them um, I really should it's so bad how much I don't know prices for anything in here I always have to go look and I look shocking when I'm like hang on a minute I need to go look <laughs> um, five dollars I think they're five or six dollars they're under ten I'm about 95 percent certain of that these brushes, they do the job. Great for your oil, great for your wax. I wouldn't personally use them. Or I would use them for paint, but they are definitely better for waxes and for your oil than your paint. Your paint, you're gonna get a lot of texture. If that's what you're going for, use them by all means. Um, they're just chip brushes, but they're brilliant for your wax. So I've got our wax, our brush, got our microfiber cloths. You guys know the deal. I love microfibers for um, buffing wax and for the hemp oil uh, I use the Audi ones they come in like a big bulk pack every now and then and they're specialized like um, I think at the moment they're sort of coming around every four to five months which is really good they normally come out with all the cleaning stuff or when they do the bulk buy stuff um, so I'm finding they're coming out a little bit more often there's heaps of microfibers on the market I have tried some other ones from other stores and I found they fell apart whereas these ones I really don't have I haven't had any issues with the quality. They stay together, the fibers stay within them, which is what you want. You wanna be using something that's lint free uh, and something that's not going to leave fibers all over your freshly waxed piece because that is a pain in the bum to deal with. Then of course, we've got our nice fine sandpaper. You guys know the drill. I always lightly sand down all of my timber whenever I wax or oil it because it gives it that really nice baby bottom smooth feeling that we love um, and you know you walk into a store and I'm one of those people I touch every single piece of furniture I can um, and if it's rough I'm not buying it um, I like to feel timber there's no reason timber should feel that rough um, so that's why we always go in with our sandpaper and smooth it down there's no excuse for rough timber um, this piece I have been using for like the last month on four or five pieces, it's still going strong. It's not going anywhere. Um, for what, all of two, three cents worth, maybe five, 10 cents of paper. There's no excuse not to be sanding your pieces. So we're gonna come in with our wax. As always, load up your brush, less is more with your wax. And then you're just going to brush it on. And this is what I like to see. Now you're going to see your timber really comes alive. I'm just going to get this end. I tend to forget ends quite a lot. I'll pack up and then I'll come back out and I'll look at something and I'll realise that I've missed like an entire section because I get a bit sidetracked. Particularly at the moment with my brain just not braining and it's driving me nuts how forgetful I am. So we're going to really see this timber come to life. You want a nice even layer of wax does not matter what direction it is applied in. When you're waxing or oiling, wipe it on there. So this is Pure Eco's Hemp Self. It's all natural, it's made from hemp, uh, and it's made from the very first press of hemp 
There is no chemical extraction involved, extraction involved, um, which means it's as natural as it comes. Really, really good for timber. Timber loves it. Very hydrating, very um, durable as well. It goes through a very natural um, chemical reaction with the oxygen in the air and it hardens. So really, really good for timber. If I'm not using a wax on timber, I'm using hemp oil. This is why I love this combination because it's the best of both worlds. I love wax because again, it provides that really nourishing um, aspect and then we've got that durability as well that we love. It's also super easy to reapply if you ever feel like you, um, if you ever feel like your timber's just starting to feel a bit dry, needs a bit of love, really, really easy to reapply. And this is all natural, there's no solvents in it. Um, so if you ever need to take it off, really hot soapy water, um, give it a really good scrub, get all that surface bit off, and then good sand and away you go. And you can do whatever you need to do then. Really, really easy to remove if you ever need to. Alright, we're going to go about halfway. Doesn't really matter if you want to go. If you're doing a really big piece, half the time, work your way slowly. You want to give it, um, look, <laughs> the instructions are you should give it 10 to 15 minutes to soak in and do its thing. The reality is, do I do that? No, I don't. Um, I don't follow instructions. I'm also extremely impatient. And um, I'm one of those people that just sort of gets on with it. But we are going to give this a light sand as well, which also helps push that wax and the oil and all those good, all that goodness. I'm just making sure I actually got my edges, but I think I have this time. It's going to push all that wax, all that oil into our timber, which is what we want. At the moment, you may feel, if you have a feel of it, it'll feel a little bit rough, a little bit furry. Completely normal for your timber. When timber gets wet, when it's raw, when it gets wet, whether it's oil, wax, or stain, doesn't matter if it's water or oil-based stain, it will feel furry. Very, very normal. Don't panic. This is why we come in with our beautiful sandpaper. And everybody should be doing this. Whether you do it now, straight after you wax, or you do it after you buff, I don't care, as long as you're doing it. Because it really does make that difference. Let sandpaper do the work. This doesn't take any elbow. You don't need to use pressure. Um, I have arthritis in my hands and my wrists um, starting to appear in my shoulder. I can do this. Um, I'm sure the majority of you can. If you can't, find somebody else that can do it for you. It's really, it's you letting the sandpaper do the work. No different to wiping down your dining room table. You're just giving it really light sand. Uh, you're using a really, really fine sandpaper doesn't really matter what direction you're going in, okay? You can go back and forth, you're not gonna scratch the grain. If you're using an 80 grit sandpaper, which I hope you're not for this walk we're doing here, if you're doing that, you're going to scratch your timber, okay? But for this, right now, you can go in any direction you like. If you want, you can use an electric sander to do this. Um, if you've got a really big or you're doing a lot of pieces or something, electric sander's fine. Just make sure you're using as fine a sandpaper as you can, 1000 plus is ideal. You can also use, um, what's it called? Steel wool as well. I know there's, I've got a few of you that use steel wool. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, I'm not a huge fan of steel wool just because I find it leaves a lot of bits everywhere. Um, and also I tend to cut my fingers on it a lot. Uh, but sandpaper, really fine. Just let it do its thing. You can take your time, you can do it for a few minutes or you can just do it for a few seconds. Really up to you. Everybody can be different. You can also come back the next day. So once this is done, I will, I'll, we'll finish doing the whole thing now. This will sit, I'm gonna stage and list it and everything today, but it will not leave me until tomorrow, even if it sells straight away, it won't go till tomorrow. Um, because I will come back tomorrow morning. So about 24 hours time, I'll give it a really nice feel. I'll give it another buff if it needs it. If there's still a lot of wax sitting on the surface, we'll give it another buff. If I'm feeling like it's still a little bit rough, we can still come in and do another wet sand, which is this technique. Um, but
But if I'm feeling it's a little bit dry, we can actually go back in and do another coat of wax as well. All right, I feel like that's more than enough. I'm more just because I'm still talking, that's why I'm still going. So, look at this beautiful timber. So once you've finished your sanding, you're gonna come in with your cloth. And again, doesn't matter what direction you go in, but you just wanna rub that cloth all over that surface. And you wanna remove all that excess. And I love these Balinese pieces because of the variations in the timber. We've got this one like really blonde streak and then we've got this real red. And you never know what you're gonna get with it either, which is why I love these pieces. Uh, what's that? Yeah, it is. It's a very professional finish and it really does, for, for so little effort, it really does make a really big difference um, in your finish. That few extra moments of sanding and you can have this buttery smooth with your initial sand when you're originally taking off that finish and when it's raw. It can feel buttery smooth, it can feel amazing, but when you wet it, timber's nature is to the fibres react and they're gonna stand up. So it can feel amazing until you pop your oil or your wax or your stain on and then it doesn't feel so good. And those fibres get a bit stuck. Particularly with things like stain, you'll find with waxes and oils, most of the time the fibres do eventually relax to an extent where they do lie back down and it doesn't feel as rough. But with something like a stain, you'll find they don't really go back down by themselves either. Um, so a light wet sand, couple minutes. Really this whole thing I could have, if I'd done this whole thing uh, without all the talking, of course, um, I wet sand for like a minute and I would have been done. But obviously I'm talking, so I've done it for a lot longer. All right, so yes, it is great to leave your wax for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not one of those people. I will never be one of those people. Uh, I don't have the patience for that, but this is fine as well. So either follow the instructions on the jar, which I do recommend for the majority of things, but for this, doing it straight away is fine. Okay, so your touch is your best friend with wax. You guys will have heard me say this a thousand times. Have a feel of it. If it's feeling rough anywhere, give it a bit more of a sand and have a feel of the area that you haven't done as well. And you'll notice there's a massive difference and I wish you guys could touch this. Uh, this is like my favorite part of our workshops, getting you guys to feel the timber compared to where we've just wet sanded. It's a massive difference. Even over when we do it over um, chalk paint, which you can do as well, Massive difference. It feels so nice. So, give it a good buff. And you shouldn't feel like there's wax sitting on the surface. Your hand might come away feeling a little bit waxy, but it shouldn't feel like there's a lot on your hand, okay? So, nice. Give it a good buff. And this is why we come back again tomorrow. 12, 24 hours, come back, give it another good feel, and see if there is still some excess sitting there. If there is, give it another buff. All right, so you can see that massive difference. Isn't that beautiful? And being the content creator that I am these days, bear with me for two seconds, I wanna take a photo. <laughs> oh, hang on. Our lights are above us in here and it drives me nuts because there's always shadows on me. I'm using a very old iPhone. <laughs> my, my phone that I'm filming on with you guys is old as well, but that one's even older. All it does is take phone calls in here, but the camera is better than what this is most days, which says something, doesn't it? All right, let's wax this other end. This isn't a big whole table. It's probably, um, I reckon it's maybe 1.2. It's not huge um, by maybe 300 deep you by all means could do, could wax this all in one go. You definitely don't need to stop, sort of stop halfway. I'm more just doing that to show you guys, okay? Um, if I wasn't filming, I would just sort of get on with it. I wouldn't 
do a stop halfway and do it like this, okay? But if you are doing really, really big pieces or you know you're being, you're going to be interrupted, whether it's kids or animals or life, do a small section at a time. Do a manageable section at a time. It won't hurt and you will find it'll all blend really nicely together. So again, we're just brushing it on. And this is why I do like a brush. I find cloths as well for applying soak up so much product. And then you're wasting product as well. Whereas a brush, this has got very little fibers on it. Um, it's not soaking up that massive amount of wax that a cloth is. So you're not wasting all that wax. Again, doesn't matter if you go over an area that's already been waxed either. So don't, don't stress about, oh, I can't just get on with it. <laughs> if you've got questions, let me know. I will upload this to our YouTube as well. If you're watching it on our YouTube, please make sure you subscribe. We really love it when you guys subscribe. I've posted a lot lately about all the little things you can do to help small businesses. Um, I completely understand how hard it is right now. Believe me, we are feeling it um, just as much as all of you are. And it's really, really hard and I completely understand not wanting to spend money on things that you probably don't feel are necessary right now and I get it, we're not either. Um, but sharing, subscribing, liking, following, all those little interactions, you don't even have to read the post, just hit a like and keep scrolling. Uh, really, really do make a big difference. Um, it lets all these different platforms know that there are people interested in our content. And um, as a result, they then push that content to other people as well. So we really, really do appreciate every small business owner, every business full stop, but every small business owner really does appreciate when you guys interact with our content in one way or another, even just clicking on the photos in a post or swiping through the photos on Instagram um, can make a big difference in how that post is then pushed to other users as well and make sure that it shows up in everyone's feed, okay? And it really does, it means a lot. So please like, subscribe, follow, all those things. If you like our content, if you find any value in it at all, please share. Um, I'm happy, I know there's a few stockers watching as well. If any of you ever want to share any of my content or if you want to do anything, please, even linking it on your website, um, you can dump in that HTML code and then your purchases, your buyers, are seeing something that can help them as well. And it doesn't bother me at all. By all means, please. It helps me, but it helps you guys too. So it really doesn't bother me at all. I'm a massive sharer and I love... I want everybody to have the content and the information that they need to be successful with whatever they're doing or whatever project you're taking on. I am completely in love with this timber top. I haven't shown you the rest of it yet. I'll pull out a drawer in a minute and show you the combination of the paint colour. I haven't told you what I've painted this with yet. Or if you've seen my posts during the week, you would have, but you might not have, so I'll show you in a minute. All right, so again, light sand. Using your hand, have a feel of it. If it's feeling a little bit rough, give it a bit more of a sand, all right? It won't hurt. It really, you can't over sand, okay? You can't over wet sand. Just keep going until you feel like you've done a really good job and it's nice and smooth. Buffing it with our cloth. Keep rotating your cloth. I've been using this cloth for a while now. It's like, there's a lot of wax sitting in it. Really doesn't matter, but just keep rotating more so that you're just not wiping that wax off and then putting it straight back on. Just keep rotating. Never chuck your cloths that have got wax or oil on them into your washing machine because even though it will come out, it's going to destroy your machine. 
as well. So you can soak them in some really hot, in some buckets of really hot soapy water to remove some of it if you like. Just don't chuck them in your washing machine because I don't want you to ruin your washing machine. But they're fully reusable. Um, I like to store them in just a Ziploc bag, just so it's airtight. Just stops them from going hard and a bit yuck as well. Keeps them nice and fresh so you can keep using it. As I said, um, particularly with the hemp oil, when the oxygen interacts with it, it hardens. Um, and it will harden on your cloth as well and your cloth will end up feeling a bit crusty and a bit gross and it won't be as usable as what it once was. So storing in something that's airtight, container, ziplock bag, whatever's going, really does help make sure that brush and your cloth is consistently reusable for a longer period of time. Eventually it will get to the point where it won't be and then at that point chuck it in the bin. But don't chuck it in the bin after one use. All right, that is feeling really, really nice. I just feel a little bit here, just a little bit rough. So I'm just gonna give it a really light sand. You can put a bit more wax on if you felt the need. I don't feel it's necessary. I'm just gonna give it a really light sand just there. And then, I love these Balinese pieces because you never know what, what the timber is going to be like underneath. It's very unpredictable and their dark stain hides that timber so well that having these really blonde streaks that we've got across the back, um, they're so well hidden, you just don't know what you're going to find. Alright, we are looking and feeling beautiful. So that's our top. How nice does that look? So we've got this blonde, this one blonde streak across the back. That is part of this timber. It's not a join. There's no joins there. That's part of this same piece of timber. Um, and that's why I love these pieces because it's got that variation. But we're looking beautiful. So here's the whole piece. So this is Purico Silk Finish in the colour Santorini, which is, is it Santorini? Santorini. Santorini. Centurine, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, it is one of the new blue colours. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've just grabbed it in the chalk, but this is the colour. So it's not as dark as Inkwell. I'll show you Inkwell. So this was originally going to be Inkwell, um, but I didn't have any Inkwell on the shelf. So this is Inkwell, and this is the Santurine. Santurine? Sat Santorine. Saturnine, I think it is. Somebody correct me. So one of you will know. Um, so, slight difference, a little bit lighter, but I actually really, really like this. And let me just show you it in. It's very similar to Purico's Peacock. So, this is the Saturnine, and this is Peacock. So, very, very similar. Um, but not quite as green, which I quite like as well. I wasn't too sure when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, it's just the same colour, but it's not. It's just enough of a difference without that green. And I definitely love, ooh, where's that camera? Definitely love um, our Saturn here. So, looking beautiful. Uh, keep an eye out on our Facebook and Instagram pages today because I am now going to go put the handles back on, which is always a fun process. Um, I'm going to put the handles back on and stage it while I've still got a little bit of energy and then I'm going to sit down and um, hope somebody walks through the door today while I have a little nap because um, I am tired and now out of breath as well. This baby's pushing on my lungs. We're sitting really high. We're up underneath my ribs um, and I'm excited to not have feet underneath my ribs ever again. Um, that's it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. Pure Eco Hemp Self is now available. It is on our website, thepetabrush.com.au. You can also pop in store or you can click and collect as well. We do ship Australia wide. Our $75 orders um, or over is free postage. Um, we can ship express as well if you're super duper keen. And if you order today before 2.30, it will be shipped today as well. I'm about to go pack orders, <laughs> which I forgot to do last night before I left. So 
I'm going to go pack orders. Then I'm going to stage this. And then at some point today, this will show up in your feeds. And I'd love if you could give it some love. Um, and I will get this video up onto our YouTube as soon as I can remember my Facebook login, which is always a challenge on the computer. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, that's it. Bye, everyone.